carried. Um, I'm sort of trying to work out which one's going to take longer in terms of the um, Northwood report or the Lincoln Road one. So I guess we'll just do the Lincoln Road one first. Um, I'm sort of hoping that we could get the, the agenda concluded by lunchtime, but um, famous last words, yeah. So um, we'll move on to the Lincoln Road, Moorhouse to Whiteley and Moorhouse Avenue sale into Lincoln bus priority improvements. And uh, this is the one where we don't actually have a recommendation from the community board because it was a split decision and both councillors were absent from the community board at the time. Uh, and so that places us in a position where we don't have a recommendation uh, from the community board. So we are now reliant on the recommendation from staff. And so uh, perhaps if I could invite staff to introduce the report. Yeah, Can I just ask a question before we start? Well, why don't we just send it back to the community board and say actually make a proper decision with the whole community board? I mean, I'm just asking as a you know you process a thing. As a matter of process, I mean, in terms of the that where we are in terms of the decision making tree, would that is that possible to send it back to the community board for reconsideration with all of its members present? I mean, does this need to be made now? I mean, we can make. The I mean, does it need sure, to be made now? I mean, we can yeah. because we've got enough well, information in front of us. Well, it is kind of your job to make recommendations yeah, to guide the council. Yeah. It'd just be, it'd just be useful yeah. to know what the community board actually. Feels is there a timing about. issue? That's the question I want to ask. Um, through you, Madam Chair, there's no specific timing issue. I mean, we're keen to get it approved and, and deliver it to deliver on council strategic priorities around bus priority. Um, but but there's no specific timing issue. I know that council council laws generally appreciate having um, a recommendation from the community board. But I'm also very mindful of the fact that the community board was split, and having two other people present may in fact re produce the same result. I mean, we've so, got we've got the councillors here, so they may have a view. Yeah. They weren't at that meeting. Okay. Well, perhaps if I. Resolve in the end anyway. Yes, I know. So, um, so perhaps if I could hear from the two councillors first, Phil. <coughs> Councillor, I'd, I'd be very concerned if if this went back and then was delayed further. It's been on the council reports for a long, long time. It's always been contentious. Um, I, I think if it went back to the board, quite frankly, we would be in a similar position. But it's up to councillors to decide. Um, I, I, I think that um, Carolyn Potter, our chair, put forward another. Uh, another little proposal which staff might like to speak to. But apart from that, I, th I think, and, and hearing from that perhaps, I, I just think we need to address this. Um, the last thing I would like to see is it carries on into the next term. Um, okay, uh, Tim? Um, I think the key for me is that the getting the, the question that, Carol, that our chairperson asked answered, which was the the same as the lane, if I may, the mm. same as the lanes on Colombo Street heading north into town across Moorhouse Ave, where you have the green light for the bus and cyclists going first. Because I ask this question, because if you look at the the Lincoln Road shopping area between Dickens Street and the Whiteley Ave, which is around I think 900 metres or whatever it is, they are family businesses, not the global franchise which are further towards town but and that is the real concern in that area there are a number of others but I guess specifically if you are looking at the travel and it's quite logical we, we all look at our bits and pieces but as a community we've got to look at those so I just ask that question both ways and that there, there is one bus stop in that in that section because I, I did look that up when Carolyn raised that. But you that. would get pulsing if you did that. So, But yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a yeah. lay person looking at the concerns of that community or that business community so I'm just asking that question which I don't I hadn't had the answer to and it wasn't asked in the, or included in the consultation. Right. It's an option. Is that to say, are you asking the, the status quo but given bus priority and with three lights? Now what I was it's asking is going. the question that wasn't asked in the consultation, yeah. which is the very reason why our community board couldn't come up with an answer. Right. So that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Hey? 
Sorry? Yes, he is. So, um, is we, no change. we can certainly speak to that if Council wants to consider it. Do you want us to speak to that well, now? or? or? I, I don't know that um, we want to consider it but um, right now because um, it does seem that if there is uh, you know, an ability to look at another option in the context of um, resolving you know, the, 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 I, I think that there is universal agreement that there has to be a bus priority down that road. There has to be. Um, and the question is, is whether, whether we have looked at this option um, and, and what that would, yeah. Because if so, it wasn't I mean, viable... Just, if you could just yeah. give us a, a little bit of a flavour of what the issue is around that option. Brendan Bisley is the project manager. Um, it's probably best place to do that, Madam Chair, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So look, it is one of the options that we did consider when we were looking at, at the range of options. One of the key concerns, a bus gate is very good at getting the bus ahead of a queue of vehicles. The issue we have in Lincoln Road in particular is the queue isn't moving. So getting a bus to the front of a non-moving queue means that there is no net gain. The bus will still sit in that delayed traffic. So. While you get them to the front of the lights and you get them to jump at the lights, the actual queue of traffic isn't moving on Lincoln Road in those peak hours. But I don't so. think that's the point that Tim was making. The point was making is, yes, have the bus lane um, all the way down, no. But, no, but, that wasn't. but get them to the front of the queue yeah. when yeah. they get to the yeah. lights. Yeah. So, so it's not all the way down, it's, it's, it's to Whiteley Avenue. Correct. Yeah. So, so they get, they get the, um, they get, a, oh, I see. It's going back the other way. Brenda did ask. So, so, so included in that, then, you know, when you've got that bus going first with the cyclists, yes. then once they've got and the green comes for everybody, but those, because the other issue is, if we've got bus priority lanes, the cyclists are free to use those, and therefore, if they're clear, the more they are safer for the cyclist as well. Oh, definitely. Yep. So yeah. if we did the, as I, I asked, the, the bus priority of the cyclists, as it is on Colombo Street, they get in and go first, that also then puts the cyclists back in the same situation as, because there is no bus priority lane once they're into the traffic. That is correct. correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, 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 are we in a position to refer it back to the community board, or are, are we in a position to discuss it today? I'm, I'm in a position to discuss it. So, I mean, it's yeah, it's a really tricky one for the community, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, James. Just a question of staff. I see that the report does mention the drawbacks. Um, associated with retaining the status quo. But I guess my question is, is it unusual um, that the do-nothing approach or status quo wasn't formally considered as an, as an option in the paper? Just because obviously inherently voting against it results in the status quo, so having um, that fleshed out, is that typical or atypical? In most of our reports we do have a status quo option. Um, it's um, not something that we normally would consult on, but um, it's something that we have as an option in our reports. So. Mm. Because council can choose, obviously, not to proceed with any of the options that we put forward, and, and the result of that is the status quo. Yeah. Right. Um, questions? Um, I had Stephen Hill and Mike. No, no, it's fine. Mike. How many um, bus users are there down? This section of Lincoln Road. Um, Madam Chair, uh, just um, would you like us to introduce it? Are we? Yeah. yeah. If, well, if, if we get, we, if we're yeah, going to consider it, because some of these but, questions but might be answered. I don't want to take off the option of sending it back to the community board just okay. right now. I just want to leave that hanging. So. <laughs> yeah. I just like the, with the community board. I mean, we've had a couple of times where council committees have actually not reached a decision this term, and we haven't sent it back to the committee, even if there was someone missing. It's just kind of come to council and we've made a decision. Um, I'd be loath to send it back. This is this is a community board, not a committee. I know, so but I it's, just I just yeah. want to kind of leave that open at the moment, uh, but let's, let's proceed. We'll um, introduce it and then... Yeah, yep. if you introduce the paper, and then we'll have a discussion about proceeding. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you. Lynette, Can actually. I Lynette, yes. sorry. Thank I'll do you. it. Thank you. Share in the love. So the primary goal for this project was to improve PT reliability along this section of the corridor. Um, and it is a strategic PT corridor, and it, it does have um, a projected increase of about 50% in traffic levels over the next uh, 20 years. 20 years. So there is a huge amount of growth in that area. Um, there were a number of options that were considered and reviewed. They're all um, detailed in section five of the report and they were discussed with the community board, which is partly where the um, option around a, a more pedestrian boulevard style option was discussed. However, it didn't achieve the PT benefits. The options in the report that have come to, to you today are looking to address the PT reliability objective of the project. The community board at the same time when we were talking to them asked us to consider and take into account the um, amenity of the village and the village feel of the area that we were travelling through and asked us to engage widely with the community and local businesses. So the proposal that you've got in front of you today is to introduce peak hour bus lanes Monday to Friday. Um, we, the proposal is looking to minimise the impact on changes to the infrastructure, so it's, there's a lot of um, line marking changes uh, and a few curb build outs that are removed um, so that we get the maximum benefit of PT um, priority with the least impact on the infrastructure through the village there. It's not, we're not looking to four lane this section of road, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, we're also looking, uh, proposing to introduce a mid block pedestrian crossing, um, introduce a number of street trees, and address footpath improvements where they, where they need to be done. So if there's bits of broken footpath or um, uh, hazards that need to be um, fixed, we, we will do that at the same time. And we've looked to address and assess access, accessibility factors across the, road, across the whole section of the, of the project. So get tactiles right, um, look at our drop cubes, all of that sort of thing. Um, from an engagement perspective that was talked about, it was, it was an extensive engagement. We talked, we went out originally, prior to going out publicly, we went and talked to all the businesses along there that are directly affected. Um, we, the staff went out for six weeks consultation, which is longer than um, we're obligated to do, but we did, did acknowledge that it was a controversial project. Uh, we had held four drop-in sessions, three of them were held at the Eddington Coffee Co-op and one was held at St Mary's Church. The drop-in sessions, um, when, we're, when we're looking for venues on those, we, we consider the size and the situation to the project that we're trying to achieve, so we, we do try and be near where, we, where, um, where the project's going to be uh, undertaken. We went to the Eddington Fair. Uh, two residents associations attended both the Hallswell and the Eddington Residents Association meetings and talked to them. And the staff also went down to the bus exchange and talked to the bus users as well. We've briefed the Sprayden and Cashmere board three times, the Hallswell Hornby Rickerton board three times, and the Linwood Heathcote uh, Central board as well. And um, overwhelmingly, we've had positive feedback. Uh, and the, the actions we're trying to do, the, the interventions we're trying to do here that meet, meet our strategic objectives that we're trying to achieve, around, particularly around climate change. Um, one other um, topic that was raised this morning was uh, about the Trumpeter <coughs> statue. It's, it's reasonably uh, a sculpture. It's a reasonably large sculpture. It is actually identified in section 611 of your report. And it's quite large and unfortunately the build out at that point needs to be taken off to allow the bus lane to go through. So we need to find an area where we can get um, the clearances required for pedestrians. And the um, staff asked in the, in the consultation engagement material where people would like to see it done, see it shifted to, and that's where they've come back to the solution of putting it on road reserve near Hazeldean Park. It won't be in Hazeldean Park's um, land, it will be on road reserve. Um, there weren't many spots that we had enough space to put it in. 
We're, um, staff are also proposing following conversations with the community board to look to uh, reinstate the Eddington or Eddingtown Village sign that was removed. So we look to do something with that through the project. Um, so yeah, that's hopefully a brief overview of what's happening on the project. Right, uh, questions. Uh, Tim, uh, Yanni, Aaron. Thank you. I'll, I will speak to this later, but just a, a, almost a side question, but it is really important for this community because you know it's about um, their belief and uh, they're being listened to. So in the Addington area, and the rules have changed, I understand, so we're going to have a 30k, which totally is a really good thing through this area, but then in the church square we've got 40k, we've got 50k in the other areas, and on Bram Street we've got 60k, so this one community has four speed limits. Can we revisit the request for the Addington community to have, they requested for a 30k through church square in the year, surrounding areas, it was allowed to 40 because of NZTA ruling, rules, but I understand that has changed. So can we uh, go and re-address this? Yes, we can re-look at that. Thank you. Yanni? Uh, thanks. <coughs> um, I was just, just trying to check, um, from in response to the spoke submission, the width of the bus line. They were critical that the width wasn't sufficient for cyclists. Um, in the change, I didn't see the cycle lanes being, or the width being adjusted. So I just, can you just talk me through that um, submission in terms of the safety for cyclists going in the bus lanes in regards to the width? Thank you. So there's, um, there's two bus lane widths we use. It's 3.7 or 4.2. So if they're 4.2, we allow for those to be um, shared by both buses and cyclists. There's sufficient room for a bus to get past a cyclist, a slow-moving cyclist. So we are proposing 4.2 lanes down Lincoln Road. Um, the advantage of that for cyclists is when the bus lanes are non-operable, at the moment there's painted cycle lanes on Lincoln Road and they're 1.5 metres, so as a cyclist going past parked cars, 1.5 is narrow. Uh, what it will give us is you'll have a two metre parking lane and you'll actually end up with 2.2 metres of space. So when the bus lanes are not operative, you'll have a 2.2 metre cycle lane which can be used. So they're definitely safe. They are, there is easy ability for us, a bus to pass a slow moving cyclist at those widths. And it's better than what we've got now. One change that was made was the bus lane on Morehouse Avenue was originally proposed to be a 24-hour bus lane, so it was narrower. In this proposal, we are proposing to make that a part-time bus lane through the provision of indented parking bays. Right, so the <coughs> point six of the spoke submission, the bus lane on Morehouse Avenue is 3.4 wide. Cycle design guidelines state a minimum of 4.2, yep. with the idea of 4.5. Just that lane's been changed or it hasn't been changed? So we've put indented bays so there is sufficient room for the bus to get past the cars, uh, cyclists. Sorry, so in the 3.7, 3.4, sorry, during the day the bus won't be in there so that, that space will be able to be used by the cyclists. Yeah. Then when the bus lane is operative, there is two areas where there is, it has been widened to cater. So the bus lane through Morehouse Ave, so in the peak period when the bus lane is operating, what's the width on that? So some of it still sits as 3.4, but some of it has been widened out to 4.2. And ideal is 4.5? 2. 4.2. 4.2. Uh, Spokes often have um, different widths to what we run, we run with. I just, I'm so quite concerned about um, so the safety with cyclists, having seen Colombo Street where cyclists hold up the buses who are trying to go through and when the cycle lane, uh, the bus lanes are operative. So I'm just trying to understand the kind of thinking behind having the buses and the cyclists sharing the same piece of road and what that does to the time for the buses. So it's not uncommon across Christchurch or New Zealand for, for, for that to occur and we have had this, the scheme, you know, pre-construction safety audit um, and we continue that through the detailed design and have a post-construction safety audit. So at the moment we've had this looked at and uh, you know there were no major issues that came up so um, but we would continue to ensure that the safety auditors are included throughout the, the scheme as it proceeds through detailed design 
if indeed it's approved. Thank you. Aaron. Um, yeah, I've just got uh, a, a few really quick questions, so I'll just rattle them off. Um, the first one is percentage of people catching buses in Christchurch now versus pre-quake. Have we got that number? Uh, <laughs> so, Brendan's looking at me. Um, patronage is, sits around 2.5%. Right. Um, I, I can't recall exactly what it was pre-quake, but uh, there'd probably be Wasn't some people, people behind us that, that could answer the question. Um, um, was it over four? It's certainly lower, lower now than it was pre-quake, that's my understanding. OK, so we're currently there. Um, and the percentage of people catching buses on this route, which I think is a more relevant question, versus other trips, do we know what... Of all the people that are going down Lincoln Road, how many are on the bus versus all other modes? I don't... I don't know if we have that number. Um, no, I don't think we have that, that split. We know there's about 20,000 vehicles a day on the corridor currently. And, do we know, and how many bus users? Do we have that number? No. Plus this. No, bus. we don't have it. So we're sorry, we don't have it off. The aim is to, the aim of the project is to increase the number of bus users because we improve reliability. And, and provide for all the growth which is uh, happening uh, out at Horse Wars. Okay, so, yeah. so then that I'll go to one of my others then. So in the consultation do we have a question that um, says how many people will now catch the bus if the bus lanes are introduced so we would have an expected growth based on is that a question in there didn't ask that didn't in, ask that in that question. the consultation no but but the consultation was in support of the bus lanes a absolutely but i support all sorts of things i don't do as most people do um, they, uh, so it's great to support something, but if no one's going to use it, we can all say it's good. But I know um, ECAN do do surveys of bus yep. users, and those are overwhelmingly positive. Um, so they survey all the people who do use their facilities, and, and the, the feedback is normally in the very high 90s. Yeah, I, I think our bus is awesome. The interchange building's amazing. Um, the, uh, uh, then my next one is... Um, uh, yeah, on other routes where we've put in the um, bus lanes, what's been the increased uh, patronage on those routes? Like, what's your expected when you put one in? Usually, we get an increase of. Um, we we did uh, send out a memo because I think this question came up in the uh, informal of a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, so Brendan will speak to it, but it is a bit complicated by, by the, the earthquakes, course. and we don't have a lot of continuous bus lanes in Christchurch. Uh, we but this have, is not a continuous either. Well, this is continuous through Lincoln Village, but it it, it is um, doesn't yeah, Main go, North Road's continuous through. Doesn't, doesn't go all doesn't go all the way to Hall's Wall, which is the yeah. ultimate aim. So it is part of a wider you know, strategic route. But, Brendan, if you'd like to speak to some of the research you did. Yeah, so look, there was some research done. Um, the earlier bus lanes were done sort of in 2010, which is when they were opened. And so there was some research done showing that there was both patronage growth and time savings. But, of course, unfortunately, then we had the earthquake sequence in 2010 and our patronage on the bus services dropped off anyway. So it's hard to do a direct comparison because... We had numbers before, but the circumstances around the city changed so much that it's hard to do a direct comparison, sort of to show that, that continuous growth. And have we put in any since 2010? This is the first um, major bus lane that we're putting in one now. Back. Okay. And then the other one is um, Clearways. The, uh, w was that ever an option just to move all vehicles quicker at peak time? So a clear way into town in the morning, clear way out at night. Is we, What's that? Yeah, we did consider a clear way. So um, as an example, you've got Curlitz Road um, between yeah. uh, Blenheim Road and Main South Road. So technically that's a clear way, but it's very difficult to mark it so it doesn't look like a four-lane road. <coughs> and so the issue you have with Curlitz Road is it is a clear way, but you would be a very brave person to park your vehicle on the side because everyone now is of the assumption it's a four lane road permanently. Right. So the difficulty we had is how would we mark it so it, it operated but still actually had car parking available. But lots of cities do clearways. I know we 
haven't got into them yet. But with the with the because if the our ultimate goal is to reduce carbon, if all vehicles get there quicker, then we've got we're burning less carbon as a city. And if we if we reduce the number of vehicles that are on the road, or increase the number of trips that are taken by PT to put it in a different different direction, we we have a bigger impact. Right. I, okay. And to cater for all the growth that you know, we have enabled through our district plan, um, the key activity centre of Hallswell, there's a lot of growth expected there. Yeah. Lincoln Road's obviously a key corridor into town. And so this in part seeks to cater for getting people from that growth node into the central city. Mm. And he hence why that question around the, um, if we do this and the bus is six minutes quicker or 10 minutes or whatever, how many people will catch the bus I think is quite important because you almost want to be sowing the seed as you do the consultation so people get excited and embrace the opportunity to... So the research that we put into the memo did show that there was an increase when we put PT priority lanes in. What, what Brendan was saying is that, that unfortunately some of those were just pre-quake yep. and um, you know it's a little bit difficult to judge um, what was going to happen long term because the earthquake sequence hit. Okay, thank you. Phil, thank you for your work on this and extensive reports. Um, I, I want to go back to the question that Tim raised with you, um, just for clarification really, around um, that concept of having a bus uh, priority lane, but by way of, um, so, so in fact I guess it could be, we'll be able to trigger the, the light, um, it, it, trigger the traffic lights, to, it, as happens I think on the corner of um, Colombo and, and um, yeah. Moorhouse, that's right. Yeah. So I, I just want to really understand though, for, just from what you've said, um, is it the situation where in fact it would only be at the intersections then that the bus would be in front and go first? Because in the rest of the lane, rest of the time it would be travelling, it would have to fit in yes. with other traffic. Correct. So that's the issue yeah. as to why as to why that concept of the bus going first isn't going to work unless there's some kind of at least part time bus priority lane. Yeah. So the proposal we have in front of you, the advantage of the bus lane is in your peak hours the traffic volumes on Lincoln Road are very high. So your you, your traffic volumes are probably down traffic speeds are down probably under ten kilometres now. Mm. It just crawls mm. through there. If a bus is caught in that traffic, it doesn't. It's, it's basically effectively has to move at the speed of the traffic. A bus lane allows them to bypass that queued traffic and to go through at the speed limit. So they can go through at the 25, 30 kilometres an hour and they're not restrained then by the speed of the surrounding traffic. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind the bus lanes is it's around time saving, but more than that, it's around reliability. So at the moment, in the morning peak, a bus can have about 20 minutes between its earliest and latest arrival time. And that's purely dependent on what traffic it hits. What this does is this allows the bus to have a more reliable travel time. So as a commuter, if you're looking at going into town, for instance, so I live in Hoonhae, so this would be my bus service. If I was going, okay, I've got a meeting at half past eight, I can reliably then rely on the bus service to get me in there. Whereas at the moment, you almost have to allow half an hour before you need to be there to actually catch a service because you just can't guarantee that your service is going to be reliable. Right. And so, just one last point about that. Uh, so this priority lane, in effect, would work in a similar way to the Colombo Street uh, bus priority lane for the number seven blue bus. Correct. Okay. It's the Thank same you. as um, Papanui Road as well. Mm. And if I may ask, I've got a couple of other questions through you, Leanne. So I just want to check about the, um, this reference in the report and on the, and on the maps to the cobblestones in, in high use areas. Yeah. I just want to make sure that the, uh, ask about the other footpath areas um, that um, might need upgrading. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. As part of this project, um, we looked at trying to go beyond just being about the PT, so it's a little bit around um, trying to improve Addington Village. So as part of that, we're looking to put in trees, replace the paving um, in that sort of high retail area. But as part of the project, we'll also go through and look at all of the footpaths. Anything that's damaged that needs to be replaced would be done as part of this project. 
Thank you. And um, my last question is really, if I may, uh, because this is about yeah. buses, I just wanted to ask you about the bus stops on the map. So um, I just one key one was the the bus stop that's currently near Tony's um, on Lincoln Road, the, the tyre yes. repair place. Was yeah. that actually got? Is that actually going to be moving? I wasn't quite sure from the maps. Yeah, so um, are you talking the outbound, so that's the south side of the road? Yes, I am. Yeah, so in the consultation that came back, we actually had some comment from users of the laneway that goes into the jailhouse um, accommodation area. So they find difficulty at the moment with the bus being on the right-hand side of that laneway. As they come out, they find it very difficult to see past a bus. Mm. So we are proposing to shift that to the left-hand side to improve safety, so it is proposed to be shifted as part of this project. Yeah, okay. And that's as a result of the feedback that came in. Yeah, thanks for confirming that. Yep. Thank you. I've got Pauline, Mike, Anne, and Glenn. Yeah, so just um, clarification the community board stated they support PT quite clearly, but they, is it, am I right, they just don't want that extra lane for the bus. Is that what the sticking point is with them? Correct. Um, I think the concern from the community board is that this is for laning of Lincoln Road. They, they're interpreting it as that, yeah. so that's, that's their issue. Yeah. And another question is on um, 5.20 and 2.1 about the inbound and outbound and the parking losses. Um, so inbound, um, you're saying it's be okay because most of those are cafes that aren't affected by that. And outbound, um, between 4 and 6 p.m. when the um, lane is operating, um, high turnover car parks have been provided in the adjacent side streets. So does that mean they'll be time restricted yes. car parks? Yes, correct. Yes. And are they just for the four to six, or will they be restricted all the time? Or we are, are proposing they are restricted all the time. So one of the comments that came through uh, from the business owners is there is a lack of sort of high turnover car parking in the general area. Right. So they actually quite like having some P60s on the side roads just to create a little bit more parking turnover. Yeah. There's um, quite a lot of office based um, premises in the area so you get a lot of workers that park in these streets pretty much all day so this creates a little bit more turnover. Right. And some residents also saw that as advantageous as well because it creates some parking for their visitors which they struggle to get at times. Yep. And so of the 275 submissions, what percentage were in support of them? Quite so, a high percentage. Yeah, so we had 167 submitters support the PT lanes. 167 out of yeah. 275. I think There's 98 a, um, opposed. There is actually a, we have broken the, the support down into the different um, yeah, I topics see on yeah. it, it's 609. On the, on the graph here. Page 156. Yep. Page 1, yeah, 156. Um, oh, yeah. Is that right? That equals about 70%. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike, Ann and Glenn. Thanks. Just, just to clarify um, one of Pauline's comments, half the board actually supported the staff's recommendation. Correct. Yep. Thanks. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. So currently the frequency for the orange route is 15 minutes. minutes and obviously one of the things to increase patronage is much better frequency less probably 10 or less is there any indication from ECAN that once this is um, in place that they will increase the frequency of this that bus route yeah so the, it was a question that we did ask so um, at the moment one of the reasons that you wouldn't run to a higher frequency is effectively the buses are just stuck in traffic so you just add another bus into the same traffic. They have indicated that um, if these bus lanes were installed, they would look at maybe moving to a 10 minute frequency along that route. Okay, excellent, thank you. 5.5 um, of the report, you talk that this bus lane can be used by taxis. Um, how many bus lanes in Christchurch are used, able to be used by taxis? All of them? Once they're in Papua, aren't they? Yeah, so um, under the way that a, um, a bus lane is um, resolved basically through legislation, cyclists, motorbikes, taxis, emergency services and buses can use them unless they are declared bus only, in which case only buses are allowed to use them. Okay. So you, you will find at some intersections it's you know, left yep. turn except for buses only, buses and cyclists only usually. 
So there's, there are some of those signs around the city. Okay. Um, sorry, did you know the, the numbers, bus user numbers no, I, down? No, I don't, sorry. Not off the top, top of my head. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then Glenn. Um, you've talked about the benefits to the to the change of parking for, for businesses along there, and there is a real sense um, that a fear that, that uh, the village kind of feel of Addington will be lost with this. Can you outline some of the benefits for the businesses along that little stretch there that will be um, achieved through this? So look, I think um, when we did the consultation, not all businesses were necessarily opposed to, to the four to six. Um, one of the things that came out, I think a lot of businesses realised that with the increasing congestion, something needs to happen and they seemed this as, a, as the best compromise. It's better than four laning. What we have tried to do is we've created the P60 on the side road, so we're adding more high turnover parking into the general area. We are looking to improve the footpaths and just the general amenity around those key business areas. And we're trying to put some street trees in. And the other thing that we have done is we've added another set of signalised pedestrian crossings. We're trying to make it easier for the residents <coughs> who do shop in those areas to move around that, that village to make it a more attractive place to walk to and from different businesses as much as we can within a very busy corridor. And outside of that, that two hour period, parking is retained on the street. Yeah. That's the other thing to remember. Can I follow up? Um, the, the lowering of the speed zones, do you see that as being advantageous to you know, this creating this village yeah. feel? Yeah. Yes. yes, we do, very much. Definitely. Yes. Thank you, uh, Glenn, then Raf. Thank you, just one question. What's the extent of the knock on effect when one bus gets behind, so uh, how far does that travel in terms of other bus routes? So this bus route goes all the way from Hawthorne to Queen's Park, so it's a continuous route, so yes, any time savings here means that the other parts of the service are potentially more reliable because the bus is getting to the interchange on time. Yep. Rev? Yeah, just a quick one. I mean, I was quite intrigued by this proposal. I can't remember who that came from. Was that you, Carolyn? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a, a very small stretch of road, you know, a, a nice village with a lot of great local shops and a community feel. And it, it just feels to me like we're amending this to suit a bunch of commuters for a small, you know, a small strip where they can surely get either the motorway to the south or Blenheim Road to the north, which is sort of higher volume um, <coughs> traffic highways. And I don't know, it's just, I mean, we were kind of went through this with Papua Nui on that. And when I reflected on how much we were spending on it for the game, I kind of thought, mm, is that a good spend of money? So uh, what's your thoughts about that? In terms of, you know, we're taking what is quite a contained village and amending it to suit people who are commuting through, I presume, to the city from out west when they've actually got other ways to get into the city? Yeah, so um, one of the issues that we have in the southwest part of Christchurch is, so it is a growth area. I mean, that, that's already approved and it's absolutely booming out there. Um, a couple of the key issues we have is there really is only sort of three key routes into the CBD or into the central, this part of town. So one of those has been prioritised for cycling, so that's the Quarrymans Trail Cycleway. So that's one route would be to come down Sparks Road, Frankley Street, Milton, into town. But we've prioritised, or the council has prioritised that for cycling, so we don't necessarily want to encourage massive vehicle growth along that corridor. In terms of um, using the motorway to come into town, if you live in Hallswell, you actually have very limited connection points, so you would need to go down Hallswell Junction Road, which is effectively going almost south to join the motorway to come back in again. So one of the key issues we have is Lincoln Road is the key corridor. It's the only corridor that has the potential to have more growth on it without major deviation. So what we're trying to do is if we can get people to use PT rather than bringing more and more cars in, that's a more efficient way of moving people. 
I mean, you say that if we can get people to use PT, that means they've got to go from fixed point to fixed point. Um, I mean, there's also the train as well. So I know there was some talk about $100 million for rail out to the, to the west. I mean, given the growth is in the southwest, shouldn't we be thinking more long term around how that rail might work? I mean, it just seems like we're spending a lot of money for commuters who are coming through villages around the periphery of the CBD and disrupting those villages just to suit people who've decided to live, you know, miles away and not thinking about actually if we're trying to move commuters, what is the best long-term solution? We are looking at the long-term solution and we, we have a, a range of business cases which are progressing that thinking, um, which um, you know, we recently got approval, funding approval for from the New Zealand Transport Agency. So those have those or have kicked off. For the future, um, the rail. Uh, one <laughs> um, is the, rapid mass transit. One, one's mass rapid transit, and and we're looking to brief the the PT committee uh, in a couple of weeks' time on progress on those. So so that thinking is definitely underway. Um, just in terms of, we, we're definitely not looking to undermine the village feel of of Addington, and, and we've been very cognizant of the concerns both of the community board and of the people who have their businesses there to try and create something which um, both provides for um, public transport but also seeks to retain that village feel. And that's the reason why we're recommending the option that we have recommended. So um, it, it does contain uh, benefits in terms of upgrades to the general amenity of the village. And, and the bus lanes themselves, are, are they're only two hours every day in each direction. Yeah. And, and then with the upgrades, the pedestrian crossing, the 30k speed limit, when you put that all in a package, um, our view is that it, that it you know, finds the right balance between retaining the general village feel of Addington as well as enabling some bus priority measures. It's, it's certainly not something that we feel is going to be uh, very intrusive on the Addington village. Okay, thank you. Right. Would someone like to um, move the resolution? I'll move option one. you move resolution. option one and seconded by um, Anne. Uh, is there any discussion? Yanni, Tim, Phil? Yeah, I mean, just in terms of what we've heard um, and reading through the submissions, I, I'm really concerned about the safety aspect and the impact on this local village. I, I think the points that Councillor Manji made yes. were correct, and it seems to me this needs more work. It does seem weird that we keep making these short-term decisions and we've got this bigger, longer-term kind of vision strategy that we're working through, but we never seem to get progress on in terms of mass rapid transit, light rail, whatever it's going to be. So I actually think that this should be um, sent back to the community board and that they should do more work on it and it should tie in with our business case. But yeah, I can't support it today. I think there's too many questions around its benefit, its safety, uh, and how it actually connects and so with the long-term vision that we have for transport in the city. Uh, Tim? Thank you. Look, leading up to this, I um, was in support of our chairperson's um, um, thoughts on the bus priority. And I, was, I went down and I sat on um, Morehouse Ave, like a very sad individual, and watched the Colombo Morehouse corner where the bus priority uh, you have the left, learning, le left turning traffic with the bus and the cyclists. But then I went to Lincoln Road and you know this all utopian vision is just dead and gone because the facts of the matter are we have allowed and it's a key factor that the South West development is happening. It is happening in such a rapid movement that it is going to outstrip any visions on rail. Any visions on rail were lost a long time ago when we put our train station at the back of Tower Junction, which is a bloody joke, to be perfectly yeah. frank. Agreed. It should have been maintained in Morehouse Ave, where we linked it with a bus terminal to go throughout the city with a loop and anywhere else in our suburbs. But that has gone. The facts of the matter are Lincoln community, the Addington community and Lincoln Road are the ones suffering, and it's getting worse. When we started this journey, the vision from this organisation was to do the four laning between um, Curlitz Road and Wrights Road into four lanes into Addington. And any way you look at it, two into four works really nicely, four into four, four lanes works okay, but four into four into two leads to gridlock. And that's what we would have had with the continuing development in the southwest 
leading into this area, and then we would have been forced to do something with, 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 which is not as good as this. And I really, um, although it has been a rocky road and a long road, I do thank the staff for doing what they've done. They're, they're, you know, nothing's perfect, and it is going to be an experience going through that, but it is being done with compassion and respect, because if you look at the vision of getting into the central city, look at Brougham Street. Between Barrington Street and Garlands Road, there are 11 sets of lights. And at each set of lights, you've got trucks accelerating and braking. So you've got carbon and you've got copper and asbestos. In Lincoln Road, between Aidan's Field and Morehouse Ave, there are four sets of lights. One over that, which is a, so takes it to five, which is a pedestrian crossing, and the railway lines. Anyone is going to, our driving behaviour is going to change. And NZTA would not be open to allowing better, and, and, um, better access to the South West Motorway, et cetera, which would have been a logical thing to do. So we've been up against it. I, I'm really sad by this, but the facts of the matter are, as our city grows, these communities are going to be affected more and more. What I am disappointed about is that NZTA, NZTA and, and everybody, where's the park and ride vision? Mm. Where is the area that is set aside in Hallsville for the park and ride? You know, we talk about light rail, we talk about everything, but the communities that are affected, those visions in the future are absolutely wonderful, but they're useless because we are here now. And the elephants earlier on talked about a tamariki, and it's actually, we've really got to get on to this, and it's not perfect. So Thank you. I'll, I'll let you wind up, Phil. Um, James and Anne Thanks. And Look, Sarah. there's obviously valid concern with, um, with all the options, but there's also a distinct lack of clarity um, around an option, option preference in general. So not just from the local community themselves and the businesses there, but, but also the local community board. So what is clear, and there's no debate from me uh, on the fact that something needs to be done here, what I'm not convinced on is that the options here do that. And one thing I do know is this seems like an extraordinary amount of money for what appears to be um, a questionable return on that investment, so uh, I, I can't support the options or and recommendations. Um, I will be supporting this because um, I represent um, a, a lot of the people that use this road and try and get to work uh, down there, uh, with the traffic is congested all the way back often to Aidenfield Drive. Um, and uh, the local residents associations actually stood on the corner of Whiteley Ave and, and watched and took notes on, on buses. They are actually full um, between those peak times. They are stuck in traffic and moving along at 10 k's an hour. There is no benefit at the moment to taking public transport. That has to change. This is the way that it will change. This will encourage people to use our buses because it will be worth their while. It will save them time, it'll be quicker, they'll be able to have a reliable um, uh, time that they know that they get into town. Um, there are all the benefits are there. The, the uh, CDHB talked about the health benefits. Even eight minutes a day walking to the bus stop is a good thing to do. And so there's that benefit. There's the, client, the, the um, benefits to our climate. It fits into everything that we're trying to do. So um, I, <laughs> staff have worked really hard to reassure uh, the people that live in um, Eddington that this won't destroy their village. In fact, it will make it better because um, for a minute, much of the day, those um, routes will be free, people can park there, there'll be easy, um, uh, a much more uh, pedestrian-friendly environment. Uh, it, it all makes sense um, to me. With respect to going back to the community board, um, I would ask if that was going to happen, that the um, halls will Hornby, Rickerton Community Board also be involved in that, as it is going to affect the uh, expected 50 or 30,000 uh, new residents that are going to live out on the southwest who will benefit from it. So, um, yes, definitely uh, in favour of this. Maybe today. Sarah, one too. Um, <laughs> Sarah? Thank you. Oh. Uh, Mike? Thank you. Um, I, I constantly hear that we need to improve our public transport in Christchurch. Um, and as a city council, there's really only a couple of levers that we can pull. Um, yet every time we look to make improvements, we get 
pushback, and a lot of the times this is not from the public, but it's actually from councillors who just seem too nervous to make decisions um, for other forms of transport that doesn't involve actually cars. Um, this, this proposal, it is supported by the community, and these bus lanes are only peak time bus lanes. They will only be operational for two hours of day on either side of the road. And between that, there will be car parks for the local businesses. The travel time savings for the bus users are significant and it's going to help travel time reliability. As Greater Christchurch grows, we will need to have an effective mass rapid, mass rapid, rapid. rapid transport <laughs> system. And, rapid. And look, I honestly still believe that can be rail, um, but it needs to be supported by a highly effective bus network system. Mm. So the people of Christchurch actually get proper public transport. What we're doing now is we're planning and acting for the future. So while this project will get better public transport outcomes, there's still a lot more to do. And a lot of that actually relies on ECAN. Um, and ECAN need to step up and do a lot better in the public transport space. Once this corridor is constructed and the bus lanes are in place, ECAN have to increase the frequency. Because one of the most important things to do to increase patronage is actually to increase frequency. So I will be supporting this. It uh, is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do right now, and it's definitely the right thing to do for the future. Um, but we can't do this alone, and a lot of the responsibility of public transport currently lies with ECAN, and ECAN need to step up. Andrew. Thank you. Um, on the matter of the role of the community board in this, it is unfortunate that the community board weren't able to make a recommendation, but I certainly rely, rely on the views of the two local councillors who are members of that board when they say that they want us to make a decision today, and it's come here today for a decision, I believe that we've, we've got a responsibility, therefore, to, to make a decision on it. Um, on the um, speed limit matter, um, in the report, it makes it very, very clear that the speed limit at peak times is well below the 30 kilometres an hour that we're talking about. Um, there have been a number of comments made around the village feel and amenity for, for businesses and residents and keeping that village feel. Um, and of course, a permanent 30 kilometre speed limit will um, add to that. It'll slow the traffic down. It makes the area um, more user friendly for pedestrians, for cyclists and for people going about their business in that, um, in that village centre. Um, but I think the key point here is that either we're serious about getting more people onto public transport or we're not. Either we're serious about reducing public transport journey times to get people out of their cars onto buses, or we're not. And there are some clear figures in this report that show that if we are serious about that, then really there's only one decision that we can make, and that's to put in these bus lanes. But at the same time, I'm pleased to see that these are um, temporary bus lanes to be used at peak times only rather than permanent bus lanes, which again respect the views of some of those small businesses and in turn respects the view of the community, the people that use these small businesses, realising that a, a vibrant economy supported by what in this part of town are some small, you know, mum and dad owned, individually owned businesses, um, a, a vibrant community also involves having a, a vibrant local economy, so we're supporting that with this proposal as well. So on a number of levels, um, this stacks up for me. I think we've got a responsibility to make a decision today and certainly option one as proposed is something that I'm happy to support. Thank you. Well, thank you, councillors. Um, I, st I start, would have started this um, a number of years ago um, in a similar position to the Car Carolyn as the current chair of the community board when, the, when we had a similar debate over the um, the bus priority lane on Colombo Street. And I appreciate um, the passion, really, of the community board members to support the, our local village community. But what we know, too, at, at, I have to say, though, at, at a council level and a citywide view, um, I, I probably would have changed the way I approached the, 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 the previous one um, on Colombo Street. Because what we know, too, is how difficult this can be 
in terms of whenever, as um, Councillor Davidson referred to, whenever we go to change the mode of transport to reduce congestion, we always have a, it's always very contentious and challenging and difficult. Um, and, and basically, too, though, you know, we heard um, the concept, though, that this is um, piecemeal and not long term is just not true. Basically, the, the Addington um, Lincoln Road has always been a transport corridor. That this bus priority lane will create the potential to have an electric tram down it in a number of years. The corridor will be there. There's a long term plan that ECAN and City Council have worked on for a long time, and this is part of it. So the other, the other point too that's not cost effective, that is not true in terms of the costs of our current um, public transport system. We, ITI had a report yesterday which pointed out that the costs of delays with our public transport in this city is 410 million. So councillors, I suggest to you that this relatively small amount for Lincoln, Lincoln Road today will be a good investment. Um, the, the other thing too is that it's pretty clear that there have been some very thoughtful submissions from people in our community. Um, one, one, one person who currently who said that basically, um, currently they said it takes me so long that I walk, don't take the bus. And they would use the bus a lot more often if it didn't take so long. So in, in a way, and, and I think that these, the submissions were very thoughtful. And the, the, this was not only supported by 70% of the submissions approximately, but um, the Addington Neighbourhood Association also supported it. The chair of that association is a retired business person who knows the Addington business um, challenge as well. So all, all together, you know, in terms of making sure that we have a reliable, efficient and affordable public transport system, I think making this decision today, while it's been contentious and difficult, I urge you to, to support option one. Thank you. I will put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. So do you want to just pop up your hands for no? That's um, Yanni, uh, Aaron and James. Thank you.